Hey Grinder School, this is CF Natural, and today I'm going to bring you a short video where I'm going to talk about uh, playing the odds in, in Omaha. Always being aware of the pot odds that you have versus the odds to hit your hand and the equity that you have and also trying to combine that with maybe reading your opponent and uh, timing reads and you know what logical hands they hold uh, and things like that. It's always very 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 important to try to be aware of your odds in any given situation as we all know poker is a very math based game and even if you're not good at math I happen to be pretty good at math I I was a math major in high school um, took a lot in college I have an MBA I'm also a CPA so you know I, I did numbers for a living and I'm good at math in my head but even if you're not you can always keep a, a little calculator handy like this let me drag it into the screen here one of these little things you can keep it on the side when you play and very quickly calculate calculate odds if you need to uh, just round everything off and uh, it, it's extremely important especially when you're having to make maybe a tough decision so let me show you a couple quick hands here that I played recently and uh, so this is a 10 PLO game on uh, Bavada and I'm sitting right here and uh, I think I just sat down at this table you know I have ten dollars exactly so I just sat down at this table I really didn't have any information I guess you notice it's five hands so it was my first hand I sat down and this is uh, I waited for the big blind to come around so a few hands were played you notice I this is my first hand some other people have four or five hands because I was waiting for the big blind to come around so let's get started here oops we jumped over all right let's try again here we go okay and so I'm in the big blind and I have a pretty nice hand here ace king queen nine double suited we have three broadways the nine he could be called a dangler but it's you know it's just one off a broadway hand to ten this is a pretty solid hand, starting hand right here with two flush draws very coordinated cards you can hit straights you can hit flushes you can hit a big two pair that's a good starting hand. I, even though I'm out of position here, I'm prepared to call a raise with this hand. So we get a limp, a call. Uh, I'm just going to complete here. There's really no reason uh, out of position to this guy to start raising. I don't think there's still a lot of boards that I can miss. Uh, I wouldn't fault you if you raised here in position. I would be raising if I was on the button and it limped to me. I'd probably be raising this hand almost all the time. But I think here, just completing is fine. I don't think we really need to start building a pot until we see if we hit something. So I just check. So we get a pretty decent flop here. We hit top pair. We hit the nut flush draw in spades with our ace queen of spades. We also hit a gut shot. If a 10 comes, we're going to have a straight, the nut straight, right? Because we'll have ace queen, 10 jack king. So we hit this flop fairly hard with top pair, gut shot, and nut flush draw. So this guy checks. I go ahead and bet two thirds pot, 20 cents into 30. I want to start building a pot in case I do hit. When you have a strong draw like this, the rule of thumb is you want to bet it like you got it. That's what they say. Uh, now that doesn't mean you want to be just pounding pot size bets in against multiple opponents, but I've only got two opponents here. The odds are I've hit this board harder than they have. And most importantly, uh, I have a backup plan, right? I, I only have, if I just had top pair here, i not so sure I would bet. Maybe, but I wouldn't be really looking to put much money in. But in this case, having a flush draw and a straight draw on top of my top pair, uh, I have a lot of equity here. And so I want to start to build a pot and I want to get value from worse hands. You know, somebody can have a king with a worse kicker. Somebody could have a jack and, and maybe a, um, think it's good. Somebody could have a worse flush draw because I have the nut flush draw. There's a lot of things that, that could call. I get called by this player three over here and player six folds. So the turn is a brick, at least to me. It brings a potential heart flush draw out there. To me, it's basically a brick. Now, I still have a lot of equity on this board. Okay, I still have top pair. I still have the nut flush draw. I still have a straight draw. So do I check? Do I bet? I decide to go ahead and bet 
uh, I think half pot here. Yeah, the reason why is I kind of want to try to control the size of the bedding. I don't really want to check, give him control of the action and the initiative and let him decide how much he wants to bet. And and he could check behind, you know, if he's on like a heart flush draw or something. And then I give him a free card. Um, now, I don't so much hate a free card because I'm drawing too. But I still probably have more equity than he does in this pot, I would think. Um and so I still would like to get some value, and I'd like to name my own price. And half pot is right about what I'd like to play for to see a river card. Now, if he raises me as kind of a gross spot, but I may well, depending on how much, I may well have enough equity to call that raise. I'm willing to take that chance in this case. Uh, but I wouldn't hate a check here. I really wouldn't at all. But I decide to bet half pot because I feel like he could fold at this point. He may have just floated the flop. He may not. If he doesn't have a, any kind of a flush draw, if he doesn't have spades or hearts, he very well may have to fold here. So it's great if I can take it down without having to see a river. Um, because I'm only 20% to hit that flush, if that. Um, but if not, then, you know, I've still got a lot of equity and I'm happy to, to you know, uh, to try to get a little bit more money in. He calls. Okay, so the river completes the flush, but it does pair the board. Now, I have a king. I have a blocker. But if he was sitting there with king seven, with king jack, um, something like that, he just hit a full house. And I don't have a full house. I do have the nut flush. So uh, I don't really want to be checked. If I get check raised on this board, it's gross. I probably have to fold. So if I sit here and I bet like 80 cents and he raises me, I got to dump the hand. Um it's just too likely somebody could have a full house. So I elect to check and then see what he does, and maybe I can call a bet. But I don't want to be check raised in this spot. You know, on the turn, I didn't mind as much. I had a lot of bet here. When this comes in, it doesn't give me a boat and puts a possible boat out there. Now being check raised is a really, really gross spot, and I don't want to throw up in my mouth. So I elect to check and see what he does. And he very, very quickly bet a dollar ten into the dollar forty pot. I remember he just like instantly bet it. So what do we want to do here? Well, we have the pot is now two fifty. We have to call a dollar ten to win two fifty plus a dollar ten, and so that is three sixty. Okay, so we have to win. We have to call a dollar ten to win three sixty. And so you can do some quick math in your head. 360, 10% is 36 cents. Three times 36 cents is a dollar eight. It's a dollar ten. So we're right at about 30%. Right? Let's drag this in here and run it real quickly. And so a dollar ten divided by 3.6, yeah, 30.5%. Call it 31 if you want to be generous. So we need to be good 30% of the time. Okay, so the question is, is this guy bluffing or does he have a worse hand than the nut flush? So does he not have a full house? Because I beat anything but a full house here. So does he have less than a full house, you know, 30% 30, 30 of the time or more? And I think he probably does. Okay, now if my odds were, if I had to be good 60% of the time, that might be another story. But I only have to be good you know, 30% of the time, less than one out of three to win this pot. Okay, and I think as quickly as he bet that he very possibly missed a draw. Okay, so I went ahead and I called. And let's take a look here. And you notice he was drawing. So on the flop, he really had just a gut shot. He called my flop bet with just ace queen king jack. He just had a gutter on the flop. On the turn he picked up a flush draw. He had the nut heart flush draw. On the river he bricked out. When I checked he looked at it and said, "Well, I have no way to win this this, you know, pot except to bluff at it." So he did so. I would have bluffed less if it was me. The pot was uh, 250. I probably would have made it look more. I would have bet like a dollar 20 or something like that, dollar 25. Um, well, no, he bet a dollar 10. It wasn't 250. What was the pot? Um, 
the pot was a dollar forty. I'm sorry, the pot was a dollar forty. I would have bet like um, sixty-five, seventy cents, no more than half pot. Say seventy cents, seventy-five cents, right around half pot. It looks very valuey, and then if you lose, you lose the minimum. I think a dollar ten was a poor sizing on his part. Um, some people do like to bet really big to scare you off. But even when he bets pot, I've only got to be good one out of three times, and uh, or so a little bit, a little bit more, and I still might have, might have been able to call that with my nut flush. So let me just quickly deselect this. So let's move forward. So three hands later, this is three hands later at the same table. So I'm up a little bit because I won that pot off of this guy. He's playing 38-13. You see, he's not exactly a loose player. So let's take a look at this next hand. And uh, so I'm in the cutoff with a very nice starting hand, 10 jack, queen, ace. There is a gap at the top, but it's a super connected hand. We do have a suit and uh, all broadways, a very nice starting hand. So we get a call here. I elect to just call on the button I might raise, but even then, you know, you don't have a pair. You're only suited to the queen, so that's only the third nut flush draw. Um, once again, this is a great hand to go multi-way. Great hand to go multi-way. But we don't really want to try to raise and build a big pot when we don't even have a pair. We don't know what the board's going to come. If the board comes something like five, six, seven, we just have to dump the hand instantly. If the board doesn't bring hearts, if the board comes like four, four, nine with two spades, we just have to dump the hand. So we really don't want to start building a pot when we don't have anything but just a, a good drawing hand but we can still call a raise here so the nice thing is when we limp we disguise the strength of our hand and yet if somebody else raises we can call the raise and they don't really realize that we actually have a pretty strong hand they might think we're just a fish that just limp called a raise um, and we don't have that much so he folds so our friend over here in the small blind that we played against uh, raises now he's out of position, so I hope he has a pretty premium hand to raise here. Get a fold. Player six calls. I, of course, am going to call. And we go to the flop. Okay. So the flop gives us top pair and the second nut flush draw. We have a queen high flush draw, and we have top pair. Not a monster hit on this flop, but not bad. Unless this number three over here, unless he's got a pair of aces, we're in pretty good shape most of the time with our draw and our top pair. Um, I'd rather face one opponent than two, but you know, unless he's got aces, if he's got aces, we're not in very good shape. We're going to have to hit our flush, obviously. We're only one out of three by the river. So we certainly have some decent equity here, but we have to proceed cautiously. So he goes ahead and bets full pot. Doesn't surprise me. Um, this guy folds. So with top pair and a flush draw, I decide to go ahead and make a call. It's basically 33% odds here, and we're certainly one in three to hit our flush. We also have top, so we have a blocker to aces, although he still could easily have aces. This is Omaha. Um, if another Broadway comes, we could easily pick up you know top two pair here. Uh, and I saw, of course, that he bluffed in the previous hand, so I know that he's capable of playing a bit aggressively and loosely as he has aggression factor, though it's over a very small sample. It's pretty high. I'd watch him. He'd been playing pretty aggressively. So I decided to make the call here. Um, it's close. You know, we could be in potentially bad shape. You know, if he has a king high flush draw, you know, then we're not going to be good here. So anything's possible. If there were two or three other players in the pot, and, and I, I'd be a little more worried. But against just one guy... Uh, the odds are on my flush draw is probably good, and so and I still have the top pair and, and chances to hit uh, top two or something. So um, I decide to go ahead and make this call. So the turn doesn't really uh, change. It does bring a, a club flush draw out there, which I don't have, but it doesn't change things a lot. So now he slows down, and I found this interesting. He bets pot on the flop. Now, let's back up here. If he suddenly shoves all in, I'm in a pretty tough spot here. All I really have is top pair. 
in this case. You know, there is a possible straight out there, although I don't really put him on 2-3 very often, but anything's possible in, in Omaha. I don't have this club flush draw, so all I really have right now is aces and a second nut flush draw. If he were to bet 428 here, which I'm guessing if he had a, a set, he would, right? You want to get the money in. You don't want to give a person a cheap price. But interestingly, he makes a fairly small bet into a $4.80 pot. He bets $1.90, less than half pot, okay, because half pot would be 240 So he makes, a, you know, a pretty small bet, really. And this looks suspicious to me. And him slowing down like that, it made me think that he really didn't have any better than maybe like a top pair like I did, and maybe not even a flush draw. So if we both have top pair and I've got this flush draw and he doesn't, now, he could be trying to name his price. He could have a club flush drop, but at that price, okay, so a dollar ninety into a four eighty pot. So the pot is now six seventy, you know, plus a dollar ninety. So that's eight sixty. So I've got to call a dollar ninety to get eight sixty. And so that should be around, you know, twenty percent or so, or a little bit more, right? Let's do the math. Let me just quickly drag in the calculator here. And so a dollar ninety divided by eight point six yeah, twenty two percent. You see it's right here, pot, twenty two percent. So I've got to be good about twenty two percent of the time to make this call. Well, I'm gonna hit my flush right about that, eighteen to twenty percent. And I've also still got top pair. I could still hit a two pair or something. So I think I, I, I have this 20. I may not have much more than 22%, but I think I easily have this 22% equity. And again, reading the way he played, the way he slowed down on the turn and made this tiny bet instead of just putting his money in, makes me think that he really isn't too happy that I called on the flop and may not have any more than I do, if not less. So given the pot, again, using the math, given the pot odds, and looking at the situation, I decide that it's worth the call. Now, if I needed like 50%, 40% equity, it'd be a lot closer. If he shoved all in, like I said, I don't know if I can make this call. I'd probably have to release the hand. But given the size of his bet, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a call, even though we may not have a lot more than that 22%. So I go ahead and make the call. Now, the river is a complete brick. Pretty much. I mean, uh, if he had, I guess he could be drawing to the low straight. But if he, you know, he probably, if he had 2-3, he had it. I mean, what, I guess if he had, you know, if he had 3-6, I guess the 2 would bring him the straight. So it does complete, I guess, the low straight. But that's about it. I consider this pretty much a brick. Although maybe not 100% a brick. And so, once again, now he instantly shoved all in. I mean, no hesitation, just instantly shoved all in. Didn't even stop to think about, you know, how much, would he call, whatever. He just instantly put the rest of his stack in. So this seemed sort of suspicious to me. Timing tells, so to speak. Plus, again, I only need 18% equity, okay, based on the numbers, right? The pot is 1098. Let's call it $11. And he put in 238. So I have to call 238 to win $13.38. Um, <clears throat> so I need to be good less than one out of five times, even though all I have here is a pair of aces. You know, I missed all my draws. All I've got is top pair, and this isn't no limit hold'em. But the question I'm asking myself is not, you know, how good is top pair? I'm saying to myself in this spot, is he bluffing with a missed draw one out of five times? And I believe he is. Maybe not a lot more than that, but I've only got to be good one out of five, less than one out of five times to make this a profitable call. If he's bluffing two out of five times, one and a half out of five times, this is a profitable call. And based on what I've seen of this guy in the previous hands that we looked at and what I've seen at the table, I believe he is. So, this, I go ahead and I make the call. And he shows up with the pair of kings. So he was behind the whole way. I had him beat the whole way. All he had was a pair of kings. I think this is a poor raise out of the big blind. Yes, he has kings double suited. 
But there's a lot of flops that aren't going to be good for the hand. Like this one. You, know, you flop an ace against multiple opponents. Somebody probably has an ace and you don't have much. Now, he did flop. I, I will stand corrected. He did pick up the nut flush draw on the flop. So he had kings in the nut flush draw. My flush draw was in trouble, actually. So it's a good thing that that flush didn't come in because I didn't have that. We were lucky there. If that heart comes in, there's probably no way I fold. So I got lucky in that regard. You know, no mistake about that. But I just don't think he needed to raise out of the small play and start building a pot. Um, on the flop, I don't know if I love the pot size bet. I think half pot would have been fine. Uh, because the ace, you know, is an overcard. All he really has is the flush draw, and he's only one in three to get there. And so when he slowed down on the turn, he was indeed trying to name his price to see a river. But it gave me great odds, and I ended up, you know, winning with just a pair of aces and taking his whole stack. So when you're playing, always be aware of those factors. You know, your pot odds, the equity that you have, your outs versus the amount you have to call in your pot odds. You know, and look for things like how fast your opponent bets, what they've done in previous hands, how likely they would be to bluff. You know, I'd already seen this guy bluff on the river. Okay, if I've never seen an opponent bluff ever, then I have to wonder, well, do they really, you know, bluff this river? But I'd seen this guy bluff the river just three hands earlier. So I knew he was capable of bluffing this river. And I only had to do it one out of five times. So you got to add up all those factors. When you put them all together, then you can make your decisions a lot with a lot more information than just trying to say, well, I have a pair of aces, you know, am I good? So that's all I got for you today. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this short video. And uh, again, as always, leave any questions or comments on the forums. I'll be happy to answer them. And until next time, this has been CF The Natural for Grinderschool.com. And good luck at the tables.